This is Sparta! Papa Nada, everyone. It took a long time, but it finally happened. I turned crazy. Totally bonkers. 100% the office stone shaped levels of insanity. This is the only explanation to why this video exists. Six song is not even out yet, and here I am theorizing about its entire story and its endings. This video will also conclude my Let's Talk About Silk Song mini series for now. As this is the final video, I try to go all out. That is why the topic of this video is so extremely speculative. It'll be interesting to see if I got anything right today. So if you watch this after Silk Song released, you will still be in for quite the treat. I don't think I have to tell you all that you will need to take this with grains of salt. Take this with as much salt as in all of my videos up until now, combined. And then just add noch eine kleine Prise for seasoning. If you did that, well, then we are ready to go. At first, I wanted to just make this about the endings, but then I noticed something. I noticed that for the argumentation to make sense, I have to talk about my take on the story anyway, so that is why I decided to make this my biggest and most speculative speculation video yet, combining both the story and endings of Silk Song in a single video. So where do we start? Well, I theorized about Silk Song's story a lot over the entire year, and I covered parts of what I think the story will look like in those two videos. If you have seen these videos and are still familiar with what I've said in these videos, you might recognize some parts of my argumentation. But that is just a tiny bit of what this video here contains. All chapters are as always linked in the description. So let's start with my last and biggest speculation video for arguably quite some time. If we go back to the original Hollow Knight, the story itself is very detailed but can be summed up really quickly. The Kingdom of Hellenest suffers from a sickness that is locked away behind a gate. The main character opens that gate by destroying its seal of binding and by killing three creatures and BAM! Final boss! Roll the credits! Well, for Silk Song's story I will try to go a bit more in depth, but of course I won't talk about some nuances like, I don't know, fucking Dirty Lamb's lack of hygiene. I'm going to try and talk about the main story and theorize about it as accurately as possible though. We'll talk about some curveballs the game could throw at us later on, but now, let's get into it. If we say Silk Song is a sequel and plays after the first Hollow Knight, which, for the sake of this video, we are, then the story of Silk Song starts out like this. Hornet gets captured and brought to Falun by the cult, who are bell-bearing freaks. As I've stated in my previous videos, the reason behind this is seemingly simple. Falum is the home of the Weavers, the tribe that lived in deepness for quite some time, but left before we as the Knight entered the kingdom. Well, why did they leave and return to their old home? I guess either their tribe or their territory is in danger. Now that is all we know for sure right now. But there are more hints. First of all, the title of the game. It is called Silk Song. Silk is tied to the Weavers, so whatever is happening is tied to them as well. And Song is also tied to the Weavers, if we're taking into consideration that there was a charm called Weaver Song in Hollow Knight. But what exactly is happening? Well, most citizens of Falum are controlled from the peak of the kingdom, like puppets on silken strings. This becomes apparent on some of the demo and trailer footage we have seen so far. Especially this ancient mechanical ant boss makes it more than clear that those strings are not just lighting effects, but are indeed strings. So it appears that many of the bugs of Falum are controlled from above like this. The entire kingdom of Falum seems to be a religious place with quite the obvious metaphor. The ones on top control the ones below. For example, the workers from the deep docks work away under the influence of the curse and mine ore which will be made into bells. And the higher up you get, the more religious, pompous and seriously fucked up things will get, as we will probably run into more and more crazy people. Remember the bell cult from before? Those bugs appear to be religious fanatics, following some kind of ideals. It is not known if they are conscious or cursed as well, but I will get into my theory about this a bit later. 
So the theory is as follows. The weavers were captured and are used to produce silk to keep the control over the kingdom up and running. However, the weavers cannot produce silk endlessly, can they? So the bell cult presumably starts panicking and searches for Hornet in order for her to be the next in line to get sucked dry, like all your uncles lining up at an Alabamian family meeting. However, she gets freed by this butterfly that can somehow destroy seals of bindings and gets yeeted into the moss grotto instead. Now let's get into the song aspect, the more difficult one to theorize about. My take on the song aspect is quite extreme. I'm gonna go into possible curveballs later, but for now, let's heavily lean into what I think is the most likely. The whole kingdom is haunted by silk and song. I think that that means that normal bugs are haunted as soon as they hear the song that is presumably played for eternity or as long as the weavers produce silk. That is further hinted at because every same bug in the kingdom has spells equipped. These spells and instruments could be helping them in fighting off the curse, drowning out the song with one of their own. Now we get really speculative. Since everyone with a bell is somewhat immune to the curse, the bell production might have been going on for quite some time because of that reason. I mean, there's an entire economy built around the production of bells. And even if the entire kingdom went to shit, the economy is probably still doing better than the US at the moment. Anyway, there even is a huge underbelly get it, of bells, so the production was targeted towards people trying to not get cursed. By that logic, the bell cult was actually sane for some time, at least until the bell defense stopped working. But it is at this point uncertain if they are still sane since some of them, especially those that don't seem to have an instrument on them, sound and behave like, well how do I put this lightly, like Harvey Weinstein advocates. My theory is that even though the bell cult might have had some good motive behind them at some point, they got haunted by the curse anyway and the capture of Hornet might have been instructed by the high ups of Falu. Now. If the bell manufacturing process actually helped restrict the spreading of the curse, why did it not work? We see why it didn't work after the lace fight from the demo. After beating her, we find a song shrine. That shrine contains a huge bell with silk all over it and seals of binding placed upon it. We can actually free that bell and let it ring out once more. My theory is that in good old Dark Souls 1 fashion, we'll have to ring several bells which were probably created to counter the curse, and Hornet will ring them to start slowly freeing the kingdom. This can be seen as a parallel to the dreamers from Hollow Knight. Now, that is not all though. Hornet gets an item called the Needle Lin, which is this game's special item I reckon, similar to the dream name from Hollow Knight. We have no idea how this will work, but maybe apart from some gameplay implementations, Hornet will have to gather around musicians in order to help her in her quest but more on that in the ending segment. Now before we get into the endings, I decided to dig my own grave. So basically, instead of saying that my somewhat reasonable explanation of Silk Song story is the only valid one, I will go 6 feet deep and talk about some curveballs Silk Song might throw into the mix. I don't have answers for all of this, but I want to be as transparent as possible and talk about the things that may just fuck this video over big time. So let's dive into the unknown. But first, let's talk about our sponsor! You thought we wouldn't return, but here we are. Chonies Juice Advertisement Free, baby! Here's the clip. After the success of Chonies Juice Original Taste and Chonies Juice Protein Shake and the two Chonies Juice Deodorants, we decided to not only take our limited edition Secret Egg Deodorant into our regular sortiment, but also introduce the new Chonies Juice Void Tendril Coffee. Made in the ancient abyss and containing scraps of arcane egg, this coffee is sure to fill in the void in your life with more void. Now for only 199 Chiyo, this coffee can be yours. And never forget, if you're ever near death, sad, or just lonely, buy Choni. Choni's Juice Incorporated is not held accountable for the possibility of the coffee taking over your soul. Consuming this product may include side effects, such as losing everything, feeling like mobs are your greatest enemies, and having the urge to slap the shit out of them while the little white flower is actually lethal for each and every one of you. Avoid flowers at all costs. First up, we got the bell cult. As I said in the previous section, the bell cult could be both good and bad, or as I think, good and against the curse, but they got cursed as well as soon as the big bell stopped working for them. 
but since this theory is kinda wibbly wobbly, I still wanted to include them here because I believe this whole part is very sketchy, so feel free to add your thoughts on this part or anything else in the comments. Lace is the next one. She has some kind of masters, my guess is that she is under the influence of Falum's higher ups, but the hateful attitude she directs towards Hornet hints at her having some kind of vendetta planned out against Hornet. But for what reason? And she can also conduct the butterflies. One of these actually breaks Hornet free from her cage. However, the butterfly does not seem to be controlled by Lace at that point. I think so because Lace has to actually be concentrated to conduct them. Because as soon as Hornet enters the arena and disturbs her, the butterflies fly away. I have my own theory on Lace, so here goes. So someone keeps this silk song going, controlling everyone in the kingdom. Who is that someone? Well, we don't know if it is one or multiple perks, but we for sure know that the creator of Falum's Folly is called Conductor Romino. So my guess is that Conductor Romino was at some point D or one of the bugs responsible for enslaving the weavers. But if we take a look at Falum's Folly, the starting poem of Silk Song, they seem to view their role with regret, as they believe the kingdom and its people have lost its truth and do not know the biggest secret of the kingdom. But more on that later. Now I do believe that Lace plans on being the next conductor, maybe having some kind of hatred towards the weavers themselves for some reason. Maybe it is because of some ancient feud between the weavers and whatever tribe Lace is from. And now she wants revenge? Who knows? But that might be her goal, revenge. She wants to kill and or capture Hornet in order to prove herself to the high ups. Moving on, I've mentioned the poem Falum's Folly, but there's something hidden in Falum that is teased in that poem. Let's put it on the screen. The poem itself is arguably about the citizens of Falum forgetting about the kingdom's origins, especially the first three lines. They are about the cursed citizens carrying out duties without knowing why. Now the last two lines are very interesting. When you wake, they shall see your truth, a beast's nature bare to all. Who is this directed towards? There are three possible options. Number one, the whole kingdom of Falum is an entity of sorts. Think of it like a sentient ecosystem. Both Bone Bottom and the Forest of Bones are arguably quite low on the map. They share motive. Compared to the new world from Monster Hunter World, Falum could be an ecosystem and the bottom of the kingdom could be a graveyard of sorts. There's no indication or hint to how Team Cherry would make this work. So instead of Falun being an entity, it could also be a force, like the Void from Hollow Knight. That force could for example be the origin of Silk or of Song. The third option is that it is a Weaver or even Hornet. Similarly, how the Knight gets in touch with his Dark Origins in the original Hollow Knight, Hornet could get in touch with hers, whatever it may be. The game description does say that she is bound by her lineage. The bottom line is however that no matter what options we can come up with here, we simply do not know who these two lines are directed at. Leave your theories to that in the comments as well. Another thing is, what if, what if, despite everything the scholars, Deep Dog Proletarian, Mithril, myself and everyone else have said and preached for the last months, Silk Song is a prequel. I already said why I don't think that it is a prequel in this video, so please don't argument towards or against it without having seen my arguments from that video, as I have tried to paint the bigger picture over there. But even though I'm 90% sure Six Song is a sequel, it could still be a prequel. Now what would that change? Not much to be honest, but basically all of the endings I came up with would not be possible but more on that later when we actually get into the endings. One other thing I wanted to mention is Seth. Seth is a Kickstarter character named after a huge Hollow Knight fan that sadly passed away at a young age. At the time of the news I wanted to make a video on it but I just could not find a way that felt right. The news actually got me kind of angry. I, I think it is just unfair. That's why I could not make a video on it. But I do think that the best way to remember him is to have a lot of fun with his character, who seems to have a very mysterious past in the ancient roots. Seth guides an ancient secret and says that the voice has chosen him. 
Now I do believe that that could be the Silk Song itself, or rather the higher ups. Remember, we supposedly know that the bells were first made to counter the cursed song and are now probably made so the song resonates from those bells further into the kingdom. Otherwise, it would make no sense why the high ups of Fallen would still allow the bell manufacturing process to take place. But we have not heard how the Silk Song sounds like. While the voice could theoretically be a different song altogether, it wouldn't really make sense because I don't believe a random voice could drown out the curse for only this particular character and influence him instead of the Silk Song. Those are my thoughts on Seth. May he rest in power and live on in Silk Song. Last thing before we go into the endings. What about the pilgrims? Falum appears to be a very religious place and pilgrimages to the top take place all the time. The question is, how is that even possible? The kingdom sure does not appear to be welcoming, especially since the whole hierarchy of the kingdom is built upon oppressing the lower parts of the kingdom. So the cult that has been cursed as well has to still recognize the pilgrims and let them through. Because I can't imagine all the pilgrims getting all the way to the top by themselves if the cult were against that. But what happens at the top? Is the great salvation they seek just them getting turned into cult members? Who knows? It would make sense, as it would ensure the religious fanatics to keep on being the strongest group in Falun and having an almost endless line of fanatics coming to them. Maybe some of them are even drawn to the kingdom by that cursed song. So, that were all the curveballs, all the unknown variables I could think of. I did not include some characters like the Vault Tenders or Sharp yet, as I've made videos about most of them already and I think what I said there is still quite accurate. Okay, now since we have talked about all of this, let's talk about the endings. I'm going to share three, no actually four possible endings with you. Two right now and one super crazy one that can be divided into two in its own segment. All of them are not possible if Silkson was a prequel because, well, Hornet would not be capable to return to Hellness in some of them and others have other problems. So throughout the story of Silksong, Hornet ascends towards the crown of the kingdom. On her way, she will ring the bells that the bell cult set up before they got corrupted. She will learn new silk abilities, which seem to have an effect on gameplay above anything else. And once she is at the top of the kingdom, what happens? Let's go for the first two endings, starting with the bad ending. Oh, actually, every ending is kind of bad, so... Starting with the lame ending. Hornet fights against the current conductor of the Silk Song, or whoever is in charge at the top of the kingdom. After she kills them, the beast, teased by Falum's folly, awakens. If we assume that the beast is something other than Hornet. It destroys everything, and everyone falls victim to the true nature of the kingdom. This would of course put the Song of Silk and its conductors into a new perspective. Were they really oppressing the kingdom, or were they just saving it from its demise? The beast would in this case almost have to be tied to the viewers somehow, I think. The alternative to this bad ending would be another bad ending. Before killing the conductor, Hornet does two things. First of all, she helps out many of the instrument-based NPCs in the game. For example, Sherma or the Caravan. The second thing she does is win over Lace. Similar to how the Knight won over Hornet in the first game, Hornet wins over Lace. How does she do this? Well, maybe Hornet finds out about the truth of Falun, for example, behind whatever Seth is guarding or whatever the ancient vault is keeping hidden and convinces Lace to fight alongside her. This backstory is basically the root of my remaining endings. So let's go on. So with the instrument-based NPCs on her side, she replaces the current Silk Song with her own orchestra and with Lace as the conductor. Now, why does she do that? Well, after killing the current conductor and freeing her ancestors, she might see the truth behind Fadum, the beast. You can see the beast as a similarity to the Radiance in a way, being a hidden final boss. After that, she holds the beast at bay long enough for Lace to start up the song and then Hornet is used as a silk vessel, putting the beast and the kingdom of Fadum back into sleep 
and back into stasis and back under control. I have to agree with what you people will say. These endings so far have been crazy. It is impossible to guess the endings correctly. I am aware of that. But after all I've said, I think that these endings still make sense within the canon I have created in this video. But of course, this canon, my canon, is not the real canon. If only one detail from before is wrong, these endings will look a lot differently. I've talked about some of these in the curveball section, so please give me some wiggle room here. The ending section, no actually the entire video, no actually the entire series, no actually the entire channel is here mostly to entertain. So if something on here is true, then well, I am as surprised as you are. With all that said, I shall go into the last super crazy and mentally challenged ending. For this last ending, the backstory is similar to the one from before. Laces on Hornet's side. But instead of being a conductor, which is Lace's dream throughout Silk Song, Lace trusts Hornet even more. She trusts her enough so that when the beast arrives, they both fight the beast together. I have no idea what Hornet could give to Lace or do to make her trust her more. Either way, together they best the beast. There's no Silken Song anymore, there's no puppeteer, no conductor. I'm not sure if Lace would survive or not, but what happens next has nothing to do with Lace anyway. With Falum saved, Hornet wants to make her way back to Hellenest. I think that the most interesting endings to start Silk Song off with is the Dream No More and the Godmaster ending in which the flower does not win. So basically every ending in which the void wins. Again. This is all just possible if Silk Song is a sequel, since I do believe that not every ending has to be put into the canon for Silk Song, basing Silk Song off of just two of those endings from Hollow Knight is possible in my book. So back in Hell on Earth, we get to play Hornet again. We see the effects the Void has had on the kingdom, black pools of Void everywhere. After wandering around the empty kingdom, she confronts her old friend, now taken over by the Void, embracing the Void and having become the Lord Shade, the Void Entity. Now there are two possibilities. She fights the Lord Shade, she fights Ghost, and probably loses to be honest. I mean, no matter how strong Hornet gets, I could not see her win against the god that bitch slapped the Radiance to death. And if the Shade Lord does beat Hornet, it would only seek to consume more, eventually getting to Falun, killing everyone in its way. Yay! The second possibility, or the fourth ending if you want to call it that, is the following. Falum appears to be home to the white flowers. In one of Hollow Knight's endings, the world is beaten by the delicate flower. And here we see white flowers in the Silksum trailer. While there are some visual differences, the fact that Samir, the one who gifts us the delicate flower, is from an ancient land, hints at her being actually from Falum. I think so because we only know one kingdom apart from Hellenest, which is Falum. So it is possible that those flowers and Simia are from Falum. That is also the way Hornet could beat the Shade Lord and possibly even save the night. Freeing both Falum and Hellenest with one little flower. That was it. My biggest video, my most speculative video, my dumbest video, my funnest to make video. I. I hope you liked it. It has been one hell of a video to make, mostly in the best ways possible. And again, this has been very speculative, but don't complain about that. You all knew that the moment you clicked on this video. That said, I am eagerly awaiting Silkstone, no matter how long it takes. And I hope you are as well. I get a lot on Silkstone and Hollow Knight on my channel, so please check it out. Also check out the Discord, we got an art contest going on there right now. Maybe you could be the lucky winner. I also got a Twitter and a Patreon, but remember, think twice before donating money to a stranger on the internet. We are still in a pandemic and having emergency money is important. That said, I love you all. I Again, I hope you liked this video and I will see you soon. Take care, my schnitzels.